Hello and welcome to the Morocco Photographic Tour information session. My name is Tom Goldner and I'm one of the organisers behind Photo Collective and I'm going to be our participating artist on this year's photographic tour, which is really exciting. So we've got a chat coming up um, with two fabulous people. We've got Rita Lazowskis, who's the general manager at Amaze Cultural Tours. Uh, and we also have Sylvie Glatier, um, who's a photographic artist specialising in the photogravia process. Um, Sylvie's been a participating artist on the tour in Morocco a number of times. And um, yeah, together we're going to be delving in a little bit further into the tour and what it entails and what it's like to be there as a participant. Uh, I really hope that you enjoy the session. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for arranging this, Tom. I'm very happy to be here and, and to talk a bit about the tours. So just by way of a bit of background, I first went to Morocco in 2010 just on a holiday and then an opportunity fell into my lap to lead a first art tour in my own arts practice, which is drawing and painting. And then one thing led to another. I met a really great... Um, tour guide there who's now my business partner since 2013 um, and I realised straight away that there were great opportunities uh, for art tours in Morocco, in particular textiles is something that um, we took up very early and that's part of every tour because the textiles abound in Morocco and, um, and inspire <clears throat> any uh, arts medium. Um, and then it slowly developed uh, to a point where I began inviting other guest artists to come and bring their following with them. Um, and now we have about six or eight tours a year, and they include drawing and painting, photography, jewellery, textiles, uh, ceramics, um, you know, you name it. Um and so photography in particular, um, we've been doing since 2014. I think uh, we first invited photographer Anne Zahalka to lead a tour. Um, we've also had Susan Purdy, Sylvie Glateur, and now yourself, Tom, uh, later this year. We're looking forward to. Um, so photography is an interesting one in Morocco because there are some cultural sensitivities so we've generally chosen photographers who um, have a bit of more of an arts photography background rather than uh, regular travel photography. Um, and Sylvia will be able to talk a bit more about that. Um, and as we progress, we'll talk about photography. But the tours themselves, they go for about two weeks. Um, they're not an intensive workshop because really what we want to do is to introduce people to Morocco and the history and culture, the landscape, the people. It's a really fantastic place to travel. And then uh, the model we use is to have the guest artist but bring together a group of people who have similar interests. And so we all become friends and um and you know share share the experience together amazing and um i was yeah very surprised and um uh, i guess like you know a little bit flattered when the invitation came through to participate and i, I think with uh travel tours um there can be a little bit of hesitancy about you know what the approach is from the companies and the photographers and one thing that um i felt really excited about from our discussion was you know, that cultural sensitivity that comes with um, going into foreign places and, you know, the way that you in interact with um, different cultures. Um, and yeah, I, I think the first day there's not even, uh, people aren't actually taking photos. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Um, and the photographers are always really outraged when on our first <laughs> outing, I tell them that they're not allowed to bring their camera or take photos. Um, but part of my philosophy is that the camera can sometimes be a barrier to your experience and that it's really interesting first up to have a look at where you are and uh, see the sights, sounds um, and so on so that um, you can take a few things in and then perhaps make more considered um, approaches to your photography. This is my email 
I'm going to just turn it off. Um, I hope that doesn't do affect us, just because it's going to bing every time. Um, yes, yeah, so the first outing, we we don't take cameras, and that's because the very first tour, you know, people like become distracted and can get lost in the busy Medina. And we it took us 40 minutes to get down the first laneway as everyone wanted to photograph every window and door of a street that we're going to spend four days walking up and down. Um, so anyway, people get over it. Um, and then after the first day, you're free to take photos. Yeah. But in Morocco, you have to, if you want to take photos of people, you generally have to ask permission. Mm. If you're taking a, a photo of a, a busy street scene, that's not a problem. But occasionally, as soon as somebody sees you lift your camera to your eye, they might object. And then we just ask you to wait for that person to move out of the way. Mm. Uh, if you do want to photograph people, then, you know, you ask permission and often they're more than happy to oblige Sometimes they want a 20 dirham tip, which is about, you know, two or three dollars. Um, and that can that's sort of an interesting area of negotiation that people have to get into. And sometimes we just say, you're going to have to just let that photo go. Um, mm. especially when we're driving um through some of the mountains, there's not somewhere to pull over. Um and uh and so the photographer, the tour leaders are always um, encouraging people and versing them up on how to photograph from a moving vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> that's very, um, that's the lesson number one. <laughs> that's that, right. Uh, yeah, giving it's, uh, it's, all, uh, it's the, all the It's actually really techniques exciting. That... Um, oh, sorry, Sylvia, I'll just cut you off there. <laughs> A little bit. No, that's all right. That's all right. I was just saying that that's um, the first thing people, you know, want to want to um, practice and be versed on because we do spend a lot of time on the road um, in our travel vehicles. And uh, the good thing about uh, readers' tours is that she always makes sure that everyone has a window seat and plenty of space, um, regardless of how many people are on the tour. Um, so yeah, uh, shooting from a from a, a moving vehicle, uh, with everything that that uh, in, entails, with all the reflections and everything, can be really interesting actually. Um, and uh, and we get some great photos that way. So, yeah. And I, th I think it's that thing where uh, you know people have got this uh, idea in their mind on you know what a place is going to be like, and of course it's always different and trying to expand that idea of what a photography trip might be, you know, when you go and, mm. uh, you know, when you're in these places, um, you know, it's not just about sticking cameras in people's faces. It's also about really thinking about, you know, what are, what are different ways that you can sort of give a sense of a place and give a sense of a culture. Uh, and I really felt that uh, not only through the way that you presented the tour, Rita, but also um, Sylvie, your work, which, um, it was very interesting to hear you talk about photographing out of car windows because that's, um, I think, very different from the way that you typically make work. It's There's a very slow mm. approach to it. Um, <laughs> yes, but um, usually the, uh, the, uh, the source material, I, I make the work slowly because of my, my production method, my yeah. printing method, but the source material, quite often it's from... Uh, images that I have shot very quickly outside of car windows. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, Sylvie, when you were invited, um, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about your, your first experience there in Morocco. And um, I know that you've got roots in Argentina and you've traveled in, um, you know, probably to lots of places in the world, but um, mm. is there, is there something about Morocco that um, st struck you as being uh, a bit a bit different from where you'd been before, and um... uh, yeah, uh, well, a um, few things uh, to say there. The first time I went to Morocco was on one of the tours um, with uh, uh, Rita that uh, she was uh, advertising uh, with Susan Purdy, and Susan Purdy uh, is an artist that I've always greatly admired, and I think the title of the tour was slow photography uh in a in something about an oasis the garden or some anyway it just really captured my attention <laughs> because it um 
it, it sort of combined. I, I always wanted to go to Morocco. I've, I, I have always been very uh, interested in um, dry places around the world and I'm attracted to uh, deserts. Um, and that's one of the places that I, I travel to quite often in the north of Argentina is is the Atacama Desert area. I've I've done a lot of work up there, as well as here in Australia in in, in our you know outback. Um, and going to Morocco was always on my on my bucket list. Um, and doing that with Susan Purdy just seemed like a dream come true. So I joined that that tour. And absolutely loved it. Um, and we did lots of interesting things. Um, and uh, yeah, then um, I was very fortunate to have Rita invite me on on a tour as a as an artist um, leading the tour. So uh, it sort of went after that uh, from there. I think that's a great uh, segue into my next question, which is about the participants that come on the trips and. Um, yeah, I think with Sylvie being, um, you know, somebody who booked in on a tour who, um, you know, obviously has got this uh, extensive background in photography and the arts. Um, is that true to most of the participants or are you getting people from all walks of life, Rita? Um, with the photography tour, look, we always, there's always a mix of people. Um, and often uh, travel companions come along, you know, there might be partners or friends and and somebody will come along and say, oh, I'm just here with my arty friend, Sylvie, who, you know, and I'm, I'm not participating, but we always rope them in uh, into, you know, approaching, just sort of responding in a creative way and people can do that mm -hmm. however they want, whether it's through writing or, or drawing or photography. Um, I think there's a growing interest in sort of theme tours where, where the, there's a focus to your travel instead of just uh, wandering the globe uh, aimlessly um, that provides some sort of focus. And I think a lot of our clients also want to be looked after and make sure that they're safe. People have um, some suspicions sometimes about, you know, going to a a third world country. I wouldn't say Morocco's third world. I'd say it's developing. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not first world. Um, and there's just sort of some concerns about safety, in particular for women travelling solo. Um, we do get a lot of women on our tours, predominantly women, um, and they they want to be looked after. And I think the advantage on travelling um, on our tours, apart from meeting the like-minded people um, is that we have fabulous guides, local guides, who then provide um, heaps of information on the history and the culture. Um, our principal guide, Abdul, is always willing to answer any questions. And I think often if you're just travelling on your own in a place, you can miss a lot of those things. You know, with Abdul, we... Have uh, you know we get to go into people's houses and have meals with families um, that you wouldn't normally do um, if you're you know trying to get around on your own. We also travel in very comfortable vehicles with really excellent drivers, so there's no no negotiating public transport or you know trying to drive through traffic or whatever on your own. If I can just add something about the photography, um, which relates to uh, your question, Tom, uh, in my experience, you get a range of um, levels of photography and uh, one of the things that I really enjoy is the fact that you have got that variety. Not everyone on the tours that I've been on um, even has a good camera. Um, we've had people on tours that will photograph with um, mobile phones, tablets, um, and I love that because it actually helps the rest of the group um, to engage with uh, the ideas of pushing um, the craft of photography outside of the technical aspects, um, and uh, I think that that's that's a really uh, important um, aspect. And and of course, you know, we also get. Uh, people who want to improve their photography and who do bring um, their their expensive cameras. And I, I always encourage people not to carry a lot of gear um, to keep it uh, simple 
um, so that they're not having to make too many choices on the road. Um, and uh, I will always spend time with people to improve their to help them improve their photography if that's what they want as well. Um, right. So yeah, that 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 variety is really good. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that as well. And having run uh, tours to Cambodia for, I think it was uh, six years we ran them, um, and it was it was the same. It was always a really interesting mix of people. Some who, I guess, were identifying as um, you know m more on the professional side of photography or, or very keen enthusiasts, but we always had people who were also really there to learn and have an experience. Um, and of course, like that exchange between the participants is uh, is a really valuable thing that happens on these tours as well. Um, and it doesn't always mm. need to be about photography. Everyone's got these, you know, life, um, these different backgrounds, these life skills that they can bring. Um, mm. So, yeah, that's I think that's always a really exciting element to these trips as well. One of the things, yeah, one of the things we do on these on the photography tour is we take a data projector with us and a screen. And so every, not every day, but, you know, every couple of days we'll, in the evening, we'll uh, perhaps get everyone to choose, you know, 10 shots, which can be difficult these days when people are shooting thousands, <laughs> uh, to actually try and review some of the images. Uh, my favourite um, participant years ago, I think it was on, I'm not sure if it was on your tour, Sylvie, on Anza Halkers, there was one guy who decided he was just going to take one essential photo each day and then write a poem to go with it. And that was a real mm. delight, um, you know, to have that sort of, you know, very focused, mindful approach. Um, mm. Yeah. The other thing that um, has happened, say, like with someone like Anza Halka, where she couldn't get enough people to, uh, you know, want to have their photo taken was that she then dressed us all up um, and staged uh, a lot of photos to try and sort of tell her story, mm. you know, that she wanted to to uh, record for, for the experience. Mm. I think that's something that I'm very, uh, well, I'm very much looking forward to bringing to the tour as well is, um, you know, there's so many different ways that you can talk about people and culture beyond photographing people. Um, you know, as we know, like environment is like a huge part of that. And um, Sylvia, I know that's sort of part of your approach as well. But um, I don't think it's a limitation that, um, you know, some people don't want to be photographed. I think that if we use that kind of thinking as an opportunity to go, well, what are the creative ways that we can um, not only work around this, but also um, possibly come up with all new, um, you know, different ideas on how we might approach this. And um, that's something that I would really love to help people think about, you know, during the tour. Um, and the idea of refining work is, I think, something I can really bring to the table as well, um, you know, coming from the world of photo books and, um, you know, helping people really understand how to sequence and how to um, take a whole lot of photos, which a lot of people do, except for that wonderful person who did one a day with the poem, um, <laughs> and helping them, you know, really get to the essence of what they're trying to say. Um, so, yeah, I'm very, very excited to, to bring that to the trip. Um, and I thought what might be nice next is um, to actually look through some of Sylvie's photos um, and perhaps while we're doing this, Rita, you can talk a little bit about the itinerary and the dates, um, just so people are able to get a um, you know grasp of that. Um, and yeah, we'll keep the the chat going as we do that. Yeah. So let me just um, get the screen share happening. This is where all the um, inevitably the technical side comes into it and might throw a spanner in the works, <laughs> but we'll see how things go. Okay. Um, are we able to see Sylvie's photo here? Yep. Great. So I'm just going to make that larger. Um, and, yeah, just whenever you're ready, Rita, you can sort of talk through a little bit about, um, you know, where we are possibly in the photos. And, Sylvie, if there's anything that um, springs to mind about, like, you know, particular moments when, when these pictures were taken, because, I'm, of course, there's always these right. backstories and, and what's going on as well. I'd love to get oh, it. Oh, boy. Well, 
We might be here for a long time. Oh, you can pick and choose. <laughs> yeah. you know. All right, look, I'll, I'll yeah. just briefly describe uh, where we travel on the photography tour. So we always start in Marrakesh. It's the most uh, visited city uh, in Morocco. It's really easy to get flights in and out of. We spend a couple of days in Marrakesh and it's really busy, uh, overload of, you know, colour and movement. Um, and then from there we take take off and cross the High Atlas Mountains. So that's a spectacular landscape um, and we head south through Oasis Valleys um, to the Sahara and do a loop of the south. So you can see here now there's some images of um, Sylvie's of Eight Ben Hadul. This one is the Todra Gorge. Um, the mountain landscapes are truly spectacular, uh, but in between we do pass through lots of small villages where you'll see photos like that one of the boys um, sitting with their, their uh, push bike. Um, this is one of our... Uh, guest houses um, where this is a woman baking a, a loaf of bread. That's a loaf of bread in her hands, believe it or not. It's sort of like Such a, an incredible mm -hmm. photograph, really is. It's yeah, and it's uh, in a in a dark, smoky room, just with one little uh, light shaft coming in. Um, and so, occasionally, we're lucky enough to, you know, the women are particularly shy of having their photos taken. Um, but there's, and it's one of the things that we've been able to do over 13 years is develop relationships where, you know, we've gained the people's trust and, and they don't mind us taking their photos, which is really nice. Mm. Um, this must be somewhere in the High Atlas Mountains, Sylvie. Yes, and it's a, it's a composite image of, um, well, you can sort of see it's, a, it's an interpretation of the mountains. Uh, yeah, uh, I with snow I, I wonder if you can talk about that a bit more, Sylvie, because mountainscapes are kind of notoriously hard to photograph and to kind of uh, retain scale and, you know, that um, what right. you're seeing doesn't translate to the camera often. No, no. So uh, why even try is my yeah. answer to that. <laughs> uh, um, no, I, 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 I quite often will like to reinterpret um, the landscape and the thing about Morocco is that uh, you, you, whether you like it or not, you get very inspired with the patterns um, from the textiles, and you can actually see in in the textiles um, and in the jewellery and everything the the influence of uh, the landscape. Mm. Um, and I think I bring that into the photography. Um, whether whether you can, you can see have or a not. look at the textile hanging behind me, and I yes. think that will um, show you some of the what you're talking about, Sylvie. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So just recently, my the last sort of body of work that I've done is it, it's just all about the patterning um, that that and and I you know landscape photography is my first love. Um, talking about shooting out of moving cars, <laughs> I love this shot. And you can see the window of the, the the bus that we were in, you know, the shape. And I just I use that as a as a compositional element. Yeah, and it um, works so well, I think. Yeah, and it yeah, it, it yeah. makes it a, a reportage image. Really, um, it gives you the sense of where the photographer is, not just you know the landscape. Yeah. Of the project and um, yeah. Yeah, it's a great example of, again, just not thinking about things as a limitation, but think about, well, how can you use this as an opportunity? Um, exactly. And this photograph yeah. wouldn't work otherwise, I think. Like, it, it really yeah. has a dynamic to it. Yeah, yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, and um, I guess uh, colour would be something that's such a huge part of um, the Moroccan landscape and the culture and um, and everything too. And it translates, of course, beautifully to black and white, but... Um, yes. I know as a photographer, we're always balancing these things. So, um, yeah, Sylvie, maybe you can talk a little bit about, um, yeah, how that. Well, um, the I, I mean, most of my work is uh, in black and white um, just because I, I'm not sure I just see the world in black and white. But colour is, uh, it's just beautiful in Morocco, particularly the, the blues and the yellows. Um, and the first tour that I did with Susan Purdy, 
uh, she used blue as the main theme of uh, her um, her body of work that she made from that trip, and we used the we used cyanotypes um, to to interpret that, uh, and that was that was uh, a lot of it was really good. It was a lot of fun, um, but yeah, you can see most of my work is is black and white. Um, I think uh, just because I'm a black and white photographer, I'm really don't have a a uh, very good translation like that to the photogravure, which is you know absolutely yes my printing method yeah um but i do bring a bit of color in not much um yeah, yeah. well the the print print and... been liked um the sessions that we've done with you have been really fabulous oh yes <laughs> yeah yes yes uh, light painting uh and we do use color in the light painting as well mm. Um, and this, yeah, yeah, I guess that like process of light painting is something you can only do when you're really spending the time making pictures, mm -hmm. um, which yeah is one of the benefits of of um, you know doing a tour with a slower approach as well. It's not like you're yeah, you that's right. Rush in and out of a, a place and paint with light. <laughs> it's just not going to. No, work. and you know the thing with Morocco is that you've got these amazing sets already set up. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's like a, a theatre set that you can just um, ask, uh, you know, people from the guest house or whatever, and everything is there already. Uh, so, and then to paint it with light with our group um, is just, uh, it's a great way to learn new technique, but also to have some fun with that. Yeah. Uh, so these photos that are scrolling through, there are, you know, people and landscapes, of course, um, and, Morocco is this incredible mix of, you know, in one direction you look and it appears as if you're in um, medieval times and then um, and then there's, you know, amazing contrasts with high tech. Everyone's got a phone, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. internet uh, is available everywhere we go, free Wi-Fi everywhere we go. Um, but, uh, yeah, so landscape and people and the architecture um, is, you know, mm -hmm. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do this shot in black and white. Had to be. Yeah, colored. I was about <laughs> to say it. Just yeah, what a what a what a great um you know yeah, what a great um photograph in terms of color and and also you know that idea of you know what people think about um what what's a technical photograph. I think that um there was that other photo that to me appeared like it was out of a car window with the two women walking and there was yes, movement, yes. movement in it and it's like well that's right you know yeah. not everything has to be this sort of pin sharp. Um, ultra focused, you know, kind of thing. exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, this one, I think, it's the shadow of the bus. That's uh, right. Yeah, yeah. We're giving away all the Sh secrets now. Oh well, you know, that's 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 great. And this is, uh, yeah, and this one as well. That they were both shot with my uh, phone camera, just yeah. held up against the glass of the the car. Um, yeah, there's and a. Yeah, a lot of opportunity to play with shapes uh, and and because quite often you don't want uh, particularly women to be identifiable. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's the, the, the shapes of the garments. Uh, yeah. It's, and what it's, kind of, um, you know, what kind of output are people making from this? So, Rita, uh, sorry, Sylvia, I know you do photogravure and you also make artist books. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, but like other participants as well, like, what are they, um, doing with the photos after the, the trip Are people making projects? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've, I've just finished working with, um, one, uh, artist who was on our last trip, uh, Barry, who created a whole, uh, folio, of, um, art pieces from, from his, uh, Moroccan, uh, work and they weren't straight photographs. He... He uh, created a lot of again with the with the um, with the patterning. Um, he created a lot of um, uh, uh, prints that were just ended up being patterns made out of made out of um, pieces of the landscape. And they were fabulous, uh, and it really sort of extended it outside the boundaries of traditional photography, uh, which was great. Yeah, we do also often take a printer. Um with us on the trip so that we can not in colour, just print out some some images. Um, and then we spend a day where some people on Sylvie's tours have sort of put together a, a sequence in some little, 
you know, concertina book or something. Um, I, I do like to see the photos come off the camera, if at all possible, um, and that's why I love working with Sylvie because I know that her images end up often as being photogravure prints, um, you know, that you can actually hang on your wall. Yeah. Is- <laughs> yeah. And that's so um, interesting as well to hear that um, oh, and valuable that, um, you know, after the tour there's, uh, there's still opportunity to be working with participants and with the artists as well. I think that's really mm-hmm. important that it's not just this transactional thing that finishes, you know, like there's investment in yeah. what people have made and, um, yeah, that's and interest right. in seeing where it can go, you know, from there. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we do always encourage our guest artists to make their own work. I mean, that's quite simple, uh, a bit more simple for a photographer, but, you know, the painters or, uh, you know, printmakers, it's great if they do their own work. Um, I always feel that, you know, the best way to learn is to, you know, from each other, see what everyone's doing. And then, of course, if Sylvie has exhibitions of Moroccan artworks later or Anza Halka, um, that's great publicity for for our business. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah. As, as an artist on uh, doing these tours it's like it, you just don't get a, a a better opportunity to um to collect ideas for you know future projects um it's a fabulous opportunity uh, which i'm very grateful for having had well, i think i've got uh, yeah, I feel, years I feel, and years of uh, archives of work that i can still make work from <laughs> uh, yeah. i feel incredibly excited about the opportunity too and um so in terms of the um you know the, the hard information that people need to um you know to to find out more about the tour and to book in and speak with you rita um what's the what what are some of the key details that people need to know um, look, they can just uh, contact me and I'll send them the detailed itinerary. Um, but, you know, most of the tours sort of follow a, a similar uh, format where we try and travel slowly. So we're staying usually at least two nights in each place and then potentially three nights at the end if we want to actually, you know, do some, you know, processing, editing, printing uh, for photography, then that gives us a bit more time. And people, uh, you know, if they want a break from all of that, there's always something to do, walks that they can go on. Um, You know, the guides are always willing to, um, you know, be flexible and, um, uh, and answer people's questions. So the thing about the tour is that you'll learn an incredible amount about Morocco, um, as well as, you know, pick up new skills in photography, one would hope. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, yeah, yeah thank you both so much for um, yeah, being part of this session. And um, for anybody out there who's thinking that this might be for you, please get in contact. We'd love to talk with you more about it, um, regardless of, you know, where you feel like you're at with your photography or your art practice. Um, I think one of the big takeaways from this chat is that there's something for everybody from this trip and mm. it's a safe and, uh, you know, a warm space to uh, make work and to expand your practice and be part of something pretty amazing.